what's going on YouTube, this is Ipsec, and this is gonna be a summary video to get you up and running with the VM you see me using in videos without spending hours to go into exactly how everything works. So if you wanna get the VM, the first step is to download and install Parrot, the Hack the Box edition. And then once you have this downloaded and installed, head over to my Parrot-Build repo, which is going to use Ansible to make all the customizations to do this. So I'm gonna open up a terminal and I'm just going to edit the preferences to make sure you can read what I'm doing here, but this is going to do it all for you, right? So the first step is to install Ansible with pip. So we'll do a pip3 install Ansible. And in one of the videos, I did use apt to install Ansible. It installs an older version. Pip is the newer version. So if you used apt, um, it's going to fail when you try to install the playbook. So definitely make sure you use pip to install it. And then once this is installed, we're going to want to go into the GitHub repo that we cloned, or we have not cloned it yet. So let's get clone, the parrot build, go in here. And then there's a requirements.yaml. So we install that with the Galaxy. So ansible-galaxy install-r requirements.yaml. And this is just going to install some third-party modules that allow our playbook to work. And then we do sudo who am I to make sure we have a sudo token so it doesn't prompt us for a password. And then all we have to do is ansible playbook main.yaml and it's going to start installing everything. You see it's doing tmux, uh, configuring it, copying bash RC. Now it's installing packages. So it's pretty much on autopilot from here. And if you wanna see exactly how everything works, if you go to my YouTube channel, there is a building parrot um, playlist that I'm uploading things slowly to. And members of my channel, it costs three to $10 a month, depending on which subscription you do, do get early access to these videos. So um, you can see it, but I'm gonna post, make one of these uh, free every single week until they're all free, right? So the whole reason I like doing this is because if you watch my videos in the past, you'll know that like, over the years, my system just has gone downhill. I have multiple Python versions, sometimes in packet work, sometimes responder works. There's just so many um, things I have to do to make sure uh, my tools are working correctly. So it's just really nice to start over from scratch. Also, um, I did this a lot when I did a lot more consulting work and pen testing work because every single client I had, I always started with a fresh OS. That way I make sure no data commingles between the two because nothing's worse then if you did something, maybe you lost your um, equipment or maybe somehow you opened up a web server in the wrong directory and then they found out and started accessing other clients' data, that's never a good thing. So it's always just a super good practice to have data isolation and things like that. So um, I always liked using Ansible to just keep getting a known good configuration, build out an OS for every single um, gig I do and Beyond that, it's just handy, right? Because I can just make small changes to things. It's really one of those things that um, you don't realize you need until you start doing it, right? Because whenever you start over and get a new OS, it's always a pain to go install all the extensions, the um, configure burp suite, make sure you have JRuby and all those other things installed so you can do extensions. This is doing it all for you, right? This whole check if burp suite ca.dir exists. This is make sure Firefox will trust burp suite if you set up the intercept mode. Now we're installing JRuby and Jython. So when we open up burp suite, we can easily install the plugins we want. It's updating our Firefox policies. We've installed some type of logging on this. So if any computer makes a request to us, it's going to log it into the syslog. We also have audit D configured. So we're going to log all our processes. So if we start doing a pen test, we forget to make a note of an action that happened of the time. We can always go back in our audit D logs or a firewall logs and see exactly when that happened because putting timestamps in the report is just so good. Um, right now, I think this is the final step of it just installing Visual Studio and installing all the extensions, right? The other thing that is really good about Ansible is you'll be able to run this playbook multiple times and it won't create issues. If you used like Vagrant or some other technology that's really just designed at provisioning, then you have to rebuild every time. And I'm going to try to keep this playbook updated every video I do, installing various tools. So if you look at the commit log of 
my project, you'll see there are 11 commits now, and you can see I added NTP date, evil WinRM, um, added some tools here. If we look, um, let's see, we can probably see all the tools. We added sharp collection to slash opt. Um, here we're installing Impacket, CrackMap Exec, and Certify. So we're just making sure all the tools are there and that's it. The playbook is installed. And I can show it running again and it's gonna go much quicker the second time because Ansible is not going to redo the things it has already done. It's just almost going to be near instant, right? So we can see it's skipping some things. Um, just okay means the packages are installed. Right now it's just checking all the um, pip x libraries that I'm using to make sure it's on the latest version. And again, not having to go install it does speed a lot of things up. So with that being said, this is gonna be the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you get benefit out of using my um, Parrot edition. And please, if you like this, um, leave comments, let me know what you wanna see in this build. And um, I guess before we end, I should open up a new terminal pane. So there's a terminal, change profile. Oh, I have to probably kill this terminal for that to be shown. Let's kill all the mate terminals. Click terminal, change profile. There's a video one. And here is the exact prompt that you see in videos. There's also tmux with my um, configuration there, all set and configured for use. And finally, if we restarted Firefox, you'll see um, uBlock is only installed right now. So I'm going to close it, open it again. It's gonna take a little bit longer to open this time because it is going to install a few other plugins. Like we have Foxy Proxy, we have our um, Darkly Reader, we have Wapalizer to identify um, how websites are built. So now if I went to a GitHub page, I can just quickly press Control, um, not Control, Alt Shift A and make it dark mode. So if I go to IPSEC, Parrot Build, it's already gonna be dark mode, but yeah. So it's Alt Shift A is the hotkey to switch a page between dark and not, but that's going to conclude the video. Hope this um, benefits you, take care, and I will see you all next time.